Welcome to how to create 3D isometric text in Adobe Photoshop. Learn how to convert your 2D text into a 3D layer using Photoshop's 3D workspace. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist with over 10 years of experience. And in this video, we'll take you through step by step on how to create 3D isometric text and adjust the lighting, color, size, camera angles, and more. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With just one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as the ones we'll be showcasing in this video. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. And you can cancel at any time. Subscribe now with the link in the description below. So let's start by going over what assets we need to complete the tutorial. First, we need the font Visby from Envato Elements. And then next, we need a color scheme to follow. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Pantone color of the year, Very Perry. So let's create a new file in Adobe Photoshop. We're going to use a file size of 1920 by 1080, but feel free to use a, another size if you want to. Let's go ahead and name this ISO text and then click create. Once we've done that, we want to create a new layer for the background. So let's double click on the background layer here and let's name this BG. And then for this, we're going to use the color, the Pantone color of the year, Very Perry, which has a code of 6667AB, like so. Click OK. And then use the paint bucket tool to fill the background with that color. Excellent. Now we're going to learn how to convert text into a 3D layer. So let's go ahead and use the text tool here. Click anywhere on the background to create your text layer. Let's go ahead and type in isometric text like so. So the font here we are using is Visby CF and we've selected the heavy size like so. And the next layer here, let's go ahead and create a, another text layer here. Let's type in in Photoshop. And this time, let's go ahead and make this a slightly smaller size, something like 80, like that. And then once you're happy with that, let's go ahead and choose a color scheme for our image. Now, the Pantone website suggests that the Cloud Dancer color is best to use for Very Perry. So let's go ahead and use that. So the code for Cloud Dancer is F1F0EC. And let's go ahead and change the color for both of these, like so. And then once you've done that and you're happy with the way it looks, select one of your text layers and then go to 3D and then select the new 3D extrusion from selected layer. From there, you may be prompted with the switch to 3D workspace. So let's go ahead and select yes. And then once you've done that, you'll see that we have a new 3D panel here, as well as our layers and our channels. And we've also converted our text into a 3D layer. Now, before we do anything, let's go ahead and do the same thing with our other text here. So go to 3D and select new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And now you'll see both of our layers here are now 3D and you can tell by the cube icon on the bottom right of our layers. Excellent. 
Now let's go ahead and merge the 3D layers together. So right now, as you can see, we can only select one layer, one 3D layer per text. So we've either got our Photoshop text, and then if we select the isometric one, you can see we've got our isometric text. So we want to go ahead and use these at the same time. So let's go ahead and select both of these layers in the layer panel. And then we want to go to 3D. And then we want to select Merge 3D Layers. Now the layers have been merged. And if we go ahead and select that, go into the 3D panel here, you'll see we've got both the isometric text and the in Photoshop text available for us to go ahead and adjust at the same time. Excellent. Now, the way that we go ahead and work within the 3D scene is by using these buttons here. So you can see that we can orbit the camera by clicking and dragging on this sphere icon here. We can pan the camera by clicking on this four arrows here. And we can also dolly the camera like so. So we can zoom in and zoom out. So use these options here to get used to moving around. And then once you're comfortable with that, let's go ahead and create a isometric view. Now to create an isometric view, first we want to select the current view in our 3D panel here. And then from there, we want to go up to the properties panel and we want to select orthographic. So this will then create a more isometric text look like so. And then all we need to do from here is then adjust the position like so until you get a angle that you like. And then once you've done that, we'll need to go ahead and adjust the way that our text looks. So to do this, let's go ahead and select one of our texts. So we're going to start with the isometric text here. And then we're going to select the deform button here in the properties panel here. And then we want to go ahead and reduce or increase the extrusion depth. Now, as you can see, as I slide along here, you'll notice how the thickness of the text is increasing and decreasing. So let's go ahead and change this to something like 11. And then we want to do the same with the in Photoshop text here. So let's go ahead and decrease the extrusion depth here like so. So I've decreased it to about four or five. And then once we've done that, Let's go ahead and go into the properties panel again and then select the coordinates button. And we want to rotate our text by about 90 degrees so that it's lying on the floor like so. So in order to do this more accurately, let's go ahead and select one of the angles here and we want to rotate it in the X axis. So just Go ahead and select 90 like so and we'll do the same with the isometric text so select 90 like that and then once you've done that all we have to do is use the move widgets so let's go ahead and select the move tool here select one of our texts and we want to move it on the x axis and move it down to the floor now, in order to find the floor, we need to pay attention to the shadows. So let's go ahead and move it down to the floor like that. And you'll notice at the top, the shadow will appear once it reaches close to the floor. So let's do the same with the in Photoshop text. Let's move it down to the floor like that. And also move it forwards like so. So if we go and zoom in a little bit more. You'll see how 
the shadow is now touching the floor like so. Excellent. So let's go ahead and change the angle so that we can see our text. Next, let's go ahead and adjust the edges of our texts just so that they're not so sharp. So select one of our texts here like so. So we're going to select isometric text. Then we're going to select the cap button in properties. And in contour, we're going to change this to a round or half round shape like so. And then we're going to change the width here to about 10%. So let's type that in 10%. And then that will make the edges of our text a little bit softer. So let's do the same for the Photoshop text as well. So go to cap, contour, half round, and change the width to 10%. Excellent. Now, once you've done this, we're going to save our view here. So once you're happy with the way that our current view looks, let's go ahead and select current view. And then from there, we want to go ahead and go to properties, select save under the drop boxes, so select save, name your view. So let's name this isometric view like so, and then click OK. Now this will save our view. So if we go to a, another view here, so if we go to default and we start moving the camera around to something completely different, just so that we can go ahead and see the different angles of our 3D objects. We can then go straight back to our saved view by going to view and selecting our saved view like so. And you'll see that it snaps right back to how we had it before. Excellent. So now that we've got our camera set up and our text set up, the next thing we want to do is to adjust the lighting. So to do this, go ahead and go to our 3D panel here, select infinite light, and you'll see that we've got this new light widget, which we can go ahead to grab and drag around the scene. And you'll see as we do that, the shadows and the lighting of our text changes. So just go ahead and move this until you get a view that you like. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a view just so that we can get some nice longer shadows to our text and some nice shadows in our actual 3D models as well. So something like this. And then once you're happy with the way that the lighting looks, we can then go ahead and adjust the colors of our text and of the lighting. So to adjust this further, go to the properties panel here. And whilst the environment is selected in the 3D layer, we can go ahead and change some of these color options. So for the shadows, you'll see that previously our shadows were quite a harsh dark color. If we go to environment, select color here, we can now go ahead and change the color of the shadow separately like so. So let's go ahead and change it to a slightly lighter shade of purple than what we had before like so. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and click OK. And then once you're done modifying the scene, we'll want to render the image. Now to render the scene, simply go to 3D and then select the render 3D layer option here. And then your scene will begin rendering. Now the rendering might take a little while, but you can always stop it at any time by pressing the escape key. After the rendering is finished, Go back to the layers panel here, then right click on your 3D layer and then select convert to smart object. This will prevent any accidental changes to the layer. 
You can also change the color of the text and the background before committing to the render. So let's go ahead and press Control Z. Go back to the 3D scene, the 3D panel here. And then again, going back to our text here, and then changing the color of the text like so. And then also the color of the background like so. So in order to change the color of the background, let's go back to the Essentials workspace so that we can have access to a paint bucket tool and then changing the color of the background here. And then once you're happy with whatever color scheme that you've created, again, go to 3D, render 3D layer. And then once that's completed, right click and then convert to smart object. So that's it for this video. Feel free to experiment with different colors and also make sure to use the different camera and lighting settings to create fun 3D style text effects. If you liked this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. Also, check out the description at the bottom for the written tutorial on the Envato Touch Plus website. Here you'll find the exact settings to follow along with the project. If you're looking to learn even more, check out some of the other tutorials in the channel. Have fun and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.